Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and this is the final part in a three part series on connecting servo motors to an Arduino and using them with JMRI to operate points and semaphore signals. You'll need to have watched part one and part two because this final part builds on what we did in those videos. So I've put a link down below in the description and I'll put a link up here as well. In those first two videos we connected a servo motor to an Arduino and then attached that to a point and then we were able to use JMRI to operate that point using our computer. In this video we'll add a couple more servo motors and connect those to semaphore signals and build up some basic signalling around our point. The aim of this is to increase the number of computer controlled elements and start building up more automation. As usual, this is a step-by-step -step guide, there's no soldering, and I've tried to make things as straightforward as possible. I won't explain why or how things work, the aim is to get things set up as quickly as possible so we can go and run our trains. Just like in the last video, we do need to modify some code, and there's no way around this unfortunately, the code is specific to your layout. I will guide you through it, show you which bits you need to change, and how to do it. If you're finding these videos useful then please give me a like and a subscribe and remember to hit that notification button so you'll be the first to know when new videos come out. Right, let's get started. As these videos are a bit longer I've split them into steps and these are listed as chapters in the description below so you can click on those and jump around to the key bits if you need to. A few quick points on safety before we get going. Please take care when working with electricity so that you don't hurt yourself or damage the sensitive electrical components. Make sure that the voltage on the power supply is 5 volts for this project. Disconnect the power supply when assembling to avoid any accidental short circuits. And it's always a good idea to use a residual current device when connecting the power supply to the mains. In this video we need everything that we used from parts 1 and 2. And in addition to that, we need two semaphore signals. So I'm going to be using two Hornby home signals. Again, we're going to need a way of mounting our servos to the board. Ideally, you'd mount the servos under the board where they couldn't be seen and all the electronics is out of the way. We need to mount them on top and I'm a bit short on space for this one. So all I'm going to use is some really strong double sided sticky tape. We're going to need a way of connecting our servos to our semaphore signals. I'm using some wire that I picked up off eBay and I think it was designed for jewellery making. It's not as stiff as the piano wire we used in the last video but it's good enough for this demonstration. If your signals and servos are going to be a long way from your servo driver you'll need some extension wires but I've arranged mine so that I can use the um, pre-attached cord just to plug straight into the servo driver. In this first step we're going to connect up the first servo, so I'm putting that in the set of pins marked number 1 on the board. So remember they're labelled 0 to 15 and this is in position number 1. Open the calibration sketch and up here on this line we need to change the servo number to 1 to match the position on the board. Then we can upload the sketch and it will centre the arm for us. Now unlike in the last video, I don't want the arm pointing directly up, I want it pointing 90 degrees off the side for this and you'll see why when we mount the servo and the signal to the board. Now we need to attach our first signal and servo to the baseboard. The first signal is going to go to the left of the siding. I've just secured it in place with a couple of track pins. As I said in the previous video, there are plenty of commercially available mounts available to attach the servo to the board and it's always better if you can mount them under the board so that they're hidden out of the way. I need to mount mine on the top of the board and because this is just a temporary layout and I need to save space, I'm using some strong double sided tape. To connect the servo to the signal, I'm using the jewellery maker's wire. I've made a hook at one end to loop through the signal lever and a hook at the other end to pass through the servo arm. We know that the calibration sketch has set the servo to be in the middle of the range, so we want the signal arm to also be somewhere in the middle between being fully up or fully down. So I've tried to make the connecting rod the right length to get the signal in that halfway position. Now just like we did for the point motor servo, we need to find the range of movement needed to raise and lower the signal. Back in the Arduino software, we'll open the serial monitor and by typing in a number followed by an X, a plus symbol or a negative symbol, move the arm to either end of the required range. Let's start with 1600. 
Try adding 50. And another 50. There's still some movement there, so we'll try another 50. That seems about right, so we'll go in the other direction and try 1400 to start with. Maybe take 50 off that. Still plenty of movement there, so we'll take off another 50. And another 50. And another 50, we're still going up. And again. And one more. And that looks like we might be at the top of the range, maybe another 50. And there, I think we're there. So our maximum is 1750 and our minimum is 1050. So take note of those because we're going to need to type those in in step 5. Now we need to repeat steps 1 to 3 for our other signal and servo. So I'm going to plug this servo into position labelled 2 on the servo driver. Then in the calibration sketch we need to update that line again and change that to be number 2 to match the position of the pins. Then we can go ahead and upload that and it will centre the arm for us on the servo. Again, remove the arm and put it into that 90 degree position or whatever position you need to operate your signal. Our second signal is going to go on the other leg of the turnout. Again, I've secured it with a couple of track pins and the servo is attached using the double sided sticky tape. Again, because the servo is in the middle of the range, I've tried to set the signal in the middle of the range when attaching it using the connecting rod. Just like we did before, we're going to now find the range of motion. Let's start with 1200. And maybe take a little bit more of that. That seems to be the lower end of the range. So now let's go the other way. Let's try 1600. Maybe add 100 onto there. We can go a bit further. Maybe try 50 more. Maybe another 50. Yeah, it's still gone up a little bit further. Another 50. One more. One more. And I think we're probably at the end of the range there. So our minimum will be 1150. And our maximum will be 1950. Again, take note of these because we're gonna need them for step five. Now we need to modify and upload the servo sketch. It's the same sketch that we used in part two for the point motor. If you need to download it again, you can do, and I've put the link in the description. The first thing we need to do is change the number of servos to three because we've got servos in position zero, one, and two now. Then we need to copy this section of code for the number of servos we've got. So we're gonna copy it twice. And let's arrange it nicely and change that to servo connection one. And then we need to change these references to be one and servo connection two. Now we can put in the ranges that we established in the last couple of steps. So we've got 1050 for the throw of one, 750 for the close of one, A 
1150 for the throw of two, and 1950 for the close of two. Now we're ready to upload that sketch. Once that's finished uploading, you need to close down the Arduino software to end the serial connection to allow JMRI to connect in the next step. Now we're going to create the signal heads in JMRI. So making sure you've closed down the Arduino software, open up JMRI Panel Pro. So once JMRI is open, let's start by opening our panels from the last video. So go to Panels, Load Panels and select the file that you saved your configuration and panel in. It should open up your layout editor with the small layout that we built in the last video. And just to check that it has saved everything, go into Tools, Tables and Turnouts and the turnout you created on address 0 on the servo driver should still be there. In the menu on the left, click on Signal Heads and click on Add. Now we'll drag this over here. In the drop-down box, select Single Output. In System Name, we're just going to call it SH1 for Signal Head 1. And in the Username, you can call it whatever you like. I'm just going to call it Signal 1 for now. Click on Create New and in the drop-down select CMRI. And this servo is on address 1002. Select the appearance when closed as red and appearance when thrown as green and hit Create. Do the same for Signal 2 but this time use the address 1003 because it's in the third position on the servo driver board. Now we've got our two signals set up in our signal heads table and you can change the appearance by clicking the little drop-down. So let's change one from green to red. Now you see that we've set it to red, but the signal's actually gone up, which would be green. So what we can do is change that in the tables. So we'll click on edit, and then here we'll change it so that appearance when closed is green, and appearance when thrown is red, and hit update. So now we change it to red and it stays where it is, we change it to green and it goes up. On signal 2 we change it to red, it goes down, we change it to green, it goes up. So that all seems to be working perfectly. Remember to store your configuration and panels. And we're ready to move on to the next step. In this step, we're going to use Layout Editor again, and we're going to put the signal heads we've just created onto our layout. So go into your layout, select Options, and go into Edit Mode. At the menu at the top, select Signal Head icon, Signal 1, Hold down shift and click where you want to place your signals. Now they're facing the wrong direction at the moment, so you can right click on them, select rotate and type in 180 degrees and that will just flip them around so that they're facing the right way. Now we can exit edit mode. And if we click on our signals on there, we can change them from red to green and you'll see that they are responding on the layout. Remember to store your panels again. So we've had a bit more practice adding servos to the layout and calibrating them. We've also learned how to set up signal heads in JMRI, how to attach those to our servos, and then how to add those to our layout in a layout editor. Hopefully these videos have shown you what you can achieve with a servo motor, an Arduino, and JMRI, and you're not limited to points or semaphore signals. You could decide to use these on a level crossing gate, you could use them on a water tower arm, or maybe on an uncoupling ramp. Um, you can get really creative, let me know in the comments what you've decided to do. In my other technology videos, I've shown you how to build a DCC++ base station, a sensor hub, and how to do block occupancy detection. And these servo motor videos were the final part needed before we could start looking at full automation of a layout. In the next technology video I do, we'll bring all of this together and set up some automation, and we'll let the computer have a go at running a train. If you found these videos useful, then please give me a like and a subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will hopefully see you again soon.